The major advances in agriculture are due to the genetic improvement of breeding stock. The technique of instrumental insemination opens these doors to the beekeeping industry. Instrumental insemination is an essential skill for honeybee stock improvement. The ability to control matings creates opportunities and enables the development and maintenance of selected stocks with economically valued traits. Today, our increasing knowledge of honeybee genetics, mating designs, and practical field selection methods combined with the improvements in instrumental insemination equipment offers an exciting future. Mastering the skill of instrumental insemination is the first step in this process. Our objective is to familiarize you with a step-by-step -step procedure. This requires precision, attention to detail, and practice to gain proficiency. There are a variety of instruments available for instrumental insemination. These vary greatly in quality and cost. Precision and accuracy in movement, as well as a wide range of adjustment, are essential features. Let's take a look at a few of these. This is the Mackinson instrument, the basic instrument of which most other instruments were designed. The hooks are moved manually by sliding these in their holders, and the syringe has a wide range of movement. It uses plastic tips, which have a capacity of 10 microliters. The second instrument is the German-built Schley instrument, has a micro-manipulated syringe that offers very fine adjustment in movement. The hooks are moved by bone socket joints. Also, the post and the queen holder are adjustable. This is updated with a Harbo large capacity syringe, which uses detachable capillary tubes and tips. This offers a lot of flexibility in shipping and storing semen. The latex connector offers flexibility in the tip. And also, the micrometer very accurately measures semen dosage. This is a Swenti instrument from Denmark. It's designed on a vertical plane in which the angles are fixed. It uses joystick-type manipulators for the syringe and hooks. The syringe is large capacity. It's a capillary tube drawn into a fine tip. It has a very different feel to it. This is the Weasley instrument from the Czech Republic. It also has a micro-manipulated syringe. The hooks are slid, made mainly from plexiglass. It has a lot of similarities to the other instruments. There's a recent trend toward more simplified and economical instruments. Uh, this is the Konert Laidlo instrument, which uses a pair of forceps instead of a sting hook to open the sting, as you can see here. A very basic design. Another simplified design is using the forceps method is the Jordan Polar instrument, as you can see here. Also has the ventral hook. The pair of forceps are used to open the queen and has a very simplified syringe. It's a capillary tube drawn into a glass tip. The final example, another simplified instrument, also uses the flexible insemination technique. This is the Latchel instrument. It is precision machine with very low tolerances, enabling smooth and accurate movement. The syringe is modeled after the Harbo syringe, which shares the same advantage of easy shipping and storage of semen. Though the basic technique of instrumental insemination has not changed significantly, you can see here there are a variety of instruments available, several of which are not featured and others which are currently being developed. When choosing your instrument, consider these things. Quality versus cost. Precision and accuracy and fine adjustment. A wide range of flexibility in movement. The various types of hooks available. The size and shape of tips. And the type of syringe. For example, in using the Schley instrument, the precision and accuracy of manipulation and repeatability of the technique will affect the ease or difficulty in learning and using instrumental insemination. Your choice of hooks and tips will vary with the race of bee you work with and personal preference. The choice of syringe will depend upon the volume of queens inseminated and the need to ship and store semen. The same careful attention given to queen rearing must be paid to drone rearing. Planning and timing are important, as drones take longer time to develop. Rearing a large number of healthy drones to maturity can sometimes be difficult. Various factors that can unexpectedly reduce the drone population must be taken into consideration. For example, such as available forage, change in the weather, stress, the instance of parasitic mites, or disease. For demonstration purposes, we're using the Schley instrument and the Harbo large capacity syringe with a Zeiss microscope. Drones are often the major limiting factor in instrumental insemination because you need a large number of mature drones. 
These are often lost in the field, or some may not yield semen. Others may be lost due to contamination. Here's a cage of drones. The aversion of the drone is a two-step process. First, you want to crush the thorax of the drone. Oftentimes, this will stimulate aversion, a partial aversion. If not, a small amount of pressure applied to the tip of the abdomen will cause the partial aversion. Notice the orange-like structures, horn-like structures, and also the contraction of the abdomen. To get the full aversion, you're going to start at the very base of the abdomen, roll your fingers forward to the tip, and there's the full aversion, exposing the semen. During this procedure, take care to avoid contamination because the drones often defecate. This will cause skin and eye irritation and also contaminate your instrument and your fingers. During aversion of the drone, remember to position the drone to avoid contamination, avoid pressure on the abdomen during the partial aversion, for full aversion, apply initial pressure at the base of the abdomen. And finally, roll your fingers along the sides of the abdomen toward the tip to expose the semen. During partial aversion, drone maturity is indicated by contraction of the abdomen and the orange-yellow color of the claspers. Never apply strong pressure to the abdomen during this stage, as this will damage the endophallus and the inversion cannot be completed. When obtaining the full aversion, remember to apply pressure along the sides of the abdomen starting at the anterior base of the abdomen and working toward the tip by rolling your fingers together in a strong and steady motion. If pressure is applied too far forward, the endophallus can be damaged. The consistency and amount of semen obtained will vary among drones, dependent upon their age, nutrition, and care. In young drones, the semen and mucus is more fluid and will tend to be more difficult to separate. Each drone will yield about one microliter. Now let's collect the semen. We're going to expel a small amount of saline solution to make contact with the semen and skim this off the mucus layer, avoiding getting into the mucus layer. You feel a little resistance when you get into the mucus layer. Now you want to take up a little bit of saline solution to keep the tip moist and we'll collect another drone. Sometimes it takes numerous drones to get a good semen load. We're going to push out the e little extra saline solution we collected, push out the air bubble, make contact, and skim that semen again off the mucus layer. If you lose contact, you can get, make contact again, making sure you're avoiding the mucus layer. You want to pick up a little saline solution to keep your tip moist. Pick another drone. Sometimes it takes several tries to get a drone with a good semen loan that's not contaminated. Then again, we're going to push out that little bit of saline solution, push out the airspace, make contact, and skim the semen off that mucus layer. And we'll try another drone. Oftentimes it takes several tries to get a good drone because not all will avert properly or you have problems with contamination or no yield of semen. For example, this drone has no semen. Try another drone. This one averted too quickly and has contaminated itself, so we'll have to try another drone. Here's another drone. Make the aversion. This one has a good semen load. Again, you're going to push out the saline solution, make contact, and just skim that semen off the mucus layer. Now let's look at some troubleshooting, avoiding mucus. When you're collecting semen, if you get that tip too deep into the mucus layer, you're going to feel some resistance, and a little bit of mucus will get in the tip. If you notice this early, you can usually flush out the little bit of mucus. Pull your semen back and flush this, work the tip back and forth till you flush out that little bit of mucus. If the amount of mucus is too large, sometimes you'll have to remove the tip. Which, what you want to do is pull all the semen up into the capillary tube, like this, remove the tip, and then you want to back flush 
take a pipette and back flush from the small area of the tip to flush out that little bit of mucus. Now we're going to reattach the tip. And then your semen is still in the capillary tube. You're going to push out the extra saline solution, and you're ready to uh, continue collecting semen. During semen collection, remember to maintain an airspace to separate the semen and saline column. Skim the semen from the end of phallus using capillary action. Avoid air bubbles in the semen column. Avoid collection of mucus. Collect a drop of saline in the tip to prevent drying. Maintaining an airspace between the semen and saline prevents mixing that will result in dilution of semen and the inability to accurately measure the semen volume. A drop of saline or semen from the previous drone is expelled to make contact with the semen on the endophallus. Using capillary action, skim the semen layer avoiding collection of mucus or air bubbles in the semen column. And finally note, don't forget to collect a drop of saline in the tip to prevent drying between drones. To inseminate the queen, a treatment of CO2 is necessary to anesthetize the queen. Two treatments are required, one during the procedure and the second treatment either 24 hours before or after the insemination to stimulate egg production. To put the queen in the tube, we're going to put her head first into the backup tube. Place the queen holder tube flush against this and let her walk back into the, back into the tube. Then put her into the queen holder assembly. The dorsal side or the side where the sting should be facing to the right. The sting hook is on the right side and the ventral hook on the left. Now we're going to move into the microscope using the standard sting hook. If you place your fingers on the inside of the post, you have a lot easier time manipulating the hooks. First we're going to place the ventral hook in, the sting hook. The ventral hook doesn't do a lot of work. You're going to work with the sting hook side. You want to lift under that sting, the whole sting structure, and pull up and over to open the queen. When the queen is open, take a look at the V-shaped tissue, which defines the location of the valve fold. For the insemination, you want to take care to make sure your sting hook is lifted up. This can be a problem if the sting hook is pushed down like this. As you see, you can put pressure on the poison sac, which will also distort the alignment. Or if the hooks are pulled too far to either the left side or the right side. For example, if it's pushed too far this way, your alignment is going to be off and the insemination is going to be more difficult. You want to get a nice alignment following the, the, the angle of your instrument, lifting that sting hook up. Now we're going to look at another type of sting hook, the perforated sting hook. This has a hole in it in which the sting is threaded. Now we're going to move into the microscope. Notice the hole in the sting hook. The ventral hook is brought forward, surrounding the sting, lifting this up. This makes it easier to bring this, the sting hook down over Thread the sting, the ventral hook is moved over to the uh, ventral side, and the sting hook is lifted up and over. Here you can see that the queen properly positioned. Notice the V, which indicates the location of the valve fold. In this diagram of the queen's abdomen, notice the position of the valve fold in relation to the oviducts and the spermatheca. The valve fold is an invaginated flap of tissue which blocks passage of semen. This must be bypassed and semen delivered directly into the median oviduct as seen here. Position the tip above and slightly to the right of the V. Using a slight zigzag motion, insert the tip a half a millimeter, then move the tip slightly to the left, increase